unbelievable miracles of what Jesus did for people like you and I. Take a look. He had been on the bed for two good months, and that's just in the ICU. But when the hospital for four months in total, he could not do the things he used to do before. He was already working before the surgery. He was he went after the surgery. He wasn't working. He wasn't drinking. He wasn't eating properly. He wasn't doing so many things, and I he became worried on Sunday when you were preaching. You are not still praying. I just came downstairs. Only last night, you made a prayer. I listened to God. I don't like where my children are. 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 What God cannot do does not exist. Good day, Pastor Jerry. Good day, NSPPGNs. I've come here to testify on behalf of my son, Jidenna. Jidenna has undergone through two surgeries. And one was done in the India, and the other one was done in the UK. Right here in the UK, um, Jidenna had his surgery. It was a successful one, but his recovery process was a really hard one. Jidenna had um, cardiac arrest. He had a lot of issues. He had infections. He had um, his stomach. I don't know what they said was wrong, but he wasn't able to digest food um, um, properly. Jidenna stayed in the hospital, in the ICU to be pre precise, for two months. He was on bed without opening his eyes for two good months, Pastor Jerry. Hmm. Ah, it was a really hard one because every time you go to the hospital, it's always one thing or the other, one thing or the other, one thing or the other. But Pastor Jerry, I thank God for this platform because I stayed on this platform and I kept on praying for my son, Jidenna. I kept on decreeing and saying that I will not bury and I will not be buried. I won't bury my son, Jidenna. We came for um, the UK prayer conference. I saw people get their healings, Pastor Jerry. I saw people walk. Jidenna was unable to walk after the surgery. He was able, unable to do the things he used to do before because, I mean, he had been on the bed for two good months and that's just in the ICU. We've never started talking. I didn't even talk about the uh, time in the ward. But we're in the hospital for four months in total. And this is Jidenna, Pastor Jerry. This is my boy. <laughs> Pastor Jerry, he could not do... Yeah, he could not do the things he used to do before. He was already working before the surgery. He was he went after the surgery. He wasn't working. He wasn't drinking. He wasn't eating properly. He wasn't doing so many things. And I he became worried because I mean, I've seen him do these things, and I'm seeing him go back to what he what he used to be when he was a baby. On Sunday, when you were preaching, Pastor Jerry, in the second service, you are giving testimony about how people got their healing. You hadn't even started praying. Jidenna, in fact, I'll leave my sister to say that to, to I'll leave my sister to explain that because I mean, somebody say what God cannot do does not exist. What my God cannot do does not exist. Pastor Jerry, on Sunday when you were preaching, you had not started praying. I just came downstairs with my niece. So I, I kept looking at my nephew in front of the TV. He was crying and scratching his leg. I, 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 then I was thinking, I was looking at him and said, ah, ah, why is my nephew suddenly sitting there in front of the TV and crying and scratching his leg while you were giving testimony of the people that stood up from their wheelchairs during the UK prayer conference? Then I said, okay, let me carry him and put him on my body. As I put him on my body, I was massaging his leg. I kept praying for him, speaking in tongues. I was massaging his leg. Then something, I just heard a voice in my ear that said, put him down now. He will walk. I thought it was my sister. But I looked back and the door was closed. The parlor door was closed. She was in the kitchen. I was like, who just spoke to me now? Then I said, okay. I put him down on the floor. My nephew stood. He didn't walk. He stood. He stood for a longer time than usual. Before, if you put him on the floor, he would just fall down. But this time around, he stood. Then I laughed. When he sat down on the floor, I put him again on the floor. He stood again. Then I moved some paces back and told him, Bobo, come, come. Then he walked towards me. I screamed. I said, ah, no, this must be a joke. This is instant miracle. This is instant miracle. But the I was almost going mad because I see here when people say they receive their instant miracle. I said, what is this? What is this? What is this? <laughs> then I took my phone so that my sister would know that I'm not joking with her or that the power of God has come to visit us in this house. Then I took my phone and recorded my nephew. 
as he was taking his steps, I went to show my sister. I didn't know that God Almighty was doing the finishing touch as we were in the kitchen. You know? Then my sister followed me to the parlor. Immediately, I stood him up again and dropped him on the floor. This boy started walking. Walking like someone that has been in the army. He started walking into his greatness. He didn't stop moving. He started moving out of the out of the married play, moving forth into his destiny, oh, Pastor Jerry. We received our Easter miracle on Sunday. What God cannot do does not exist. What my God cannot do does not exist. Pastor Jerry, come and see him walk up. Yes. Amen. Amen. He turned. He turned. He turned. Thank you so much, Pastor Jerry, because this prayer altar has really improved my spiritual life. Thank you so much, Pastor jerry thank you so much pastor uguru thank you so much mommy and no thank you so much pastor okay thank you so much nsp for always saying amen to all these prayers thank you and god bless you amen my name is clara and i'm from the uk and i have something to tell you about uh, my mom testimonies quite a couple a few i'm 19 years old and i have my little sister who's 16 and my mom is 45 and as young as she is she has been dealing with a lot of different things in her life she's had diabetes for over 20 20 years now and it was only until three four years ago that things got more serious starting from her eyes she had cataract surgery in both of them and then retinal detachment in both of the eyes and due to that detachment she couldn't see she couldn't do things, something as simple as messaging someone, watching a video, dressing herself up, feeding herself. We had to assist her with these things. And it was just, it, that's, that's not my mom. So we were recommended um, NSPPD, and my mom first joined around that time. And it was one of her first um, 7 a.m. prayers that Pastor Jerry mentioned retinal detachment, something about mm. it. I hear it again. Adabalabaya, the detachment of the retina, detachment of the retina. Ayabali Koroshada, by the power that raised Jesus from the dead. Ayadabala, what can't you do? What can't you do? Merciful God, what can't you do? Alebe and Esi Adabala, as the amen of NSPB as we thunder, we call man, let it be reversed. I remember my mom telling me this, and she told me that. She was crying when she first heard it. I was like, wow. Well, the way it happened for my mom. She's looking at me right now. <laughs> it's, oh, no. I can only thank God for that. Because when she, they were showing us the picture of before and after. And they're like, oh, look at this and everything, kids. This and that. It's healed. It's like normal, back to normal. I'm like, wow. And this wasn't supposed to happen. But then suddenly, my mom just started losing brain activity, consciousness. She was so, like subtly coming more confused, wasn't remembering things. And then I was on my way to work a day or two after and they called me saying that my mom has not been doing well overnight. I then come and I see her lying in the bed, staring at nothing. She was not blinking. That was scary. And there was something that had a bear hugger or something like that to keep the temperature up because it was low. Heart, heart rate, blood pressure, um, what else was low? Just low vitals. Things that should be in a normal range were low. It was worrying. The doctors don't know what happened. They kept asking me, telling me what, what happened now. She went before you came. And I'm just like, I don't know. This is how she was. She could do things herself. And then from that to staring at nothing. Not responding to us when we called her name. I don't know what was going on. We don't know what was going on. Then they eventually moved her down to the critical ward because they had more things to assist her in this situation and it was just worrying but to copy the glory because i knew it wasn't my mom's time yet during this time as well even before she was admitted i remember pastor jerry saying you will not be buried and you will not be buried i don't know who i'm giving this man you will not bury anyone you yourself will not be buried
Your will not be buried. Your will not be buried. And I just had that in my mind. I know this wasn't my mom's time. Not at all. No. Me and my sister, that they'll come tell us these kind of news. We don't know what's going to happen. Just trying to prepare us for the worst. We won't believe in it. I did not, I did not claim that mindset. I made sure I bought in Pastor Jerry each time when my mom, while she was there laying in the bed, playing it beside her, letting everybody hear, I don't care. <laughs> She's here right now. Because I also, the thing was just last week as well, Pastor Jerry declared that a woman will wake up from the ICU. The Lord said right now, right now, if you don't keep back your testimony, your loved one is waking up in the ICU. Your loved one is waking up in the ICU. I said this morning, I can have, they said that the indicators are falling lower and lower. He doesn't look like he will make it. But in what will be called a miracle, even while the prayer is on, your loved one is waking up. He's waking up. He's waking up. That's my mom. That's my mom. Thank you, Jesus. That's my mom. Oh, I can only thank you, God. Even the doctor was saying it's like a coma. I was in a coma. Please, it was like a coma, yeah. Yeah, like yeah. a coma. Pastor Jerry, thank you so much. Um, I can't show my face at the moment because yeah. I'm still in the hospital and I look very rough. And you look uh, beautiful, though. You know that. <laughs> thank you. And you look better. Thank you. Mm -hmm. This testimony is like basically bringing me back from the dead mm. because I truly believe I was gone. So yeah, God brought me back. I think God sees me alive on planet Earth. You are powerful, powerful man of God. Anyone that underestimates you, underestimates his life or our life. They don't know. God has sent you a mission on planet Earth, and it shall be fulfilled in the mighty name of Jesus. You and the rest of your co-pastors, you are loved beyond your wildest imagination dreams. Yes. You are blessed and protected. Yes. Thank you, Pastor Jerry. Mm -hmm. What God cannot do does, does not exist. exist. Amen. Yes. And to others that have been saying amen as well, when Pastor Jerry declares things, God bless you too. God is good. You'll testify again and I know others will. Are we coming back again? Yes, we are coming back. This time you can even see her. Mm -hmm. See her yeah. all glam and just beautiful. Mm. Come on. God bless you. What God cannot do does not exist. Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise Jesus. My name is uh, Christina Augusta Keia Nsegu. I am a born again Christian and I am from Mwanza, Tanzania. And uh, I am a super NSPPD member. <laughs> I've joined NSPPD uh, since 2021 through my friend. And uh, I am I'm really a super, super follower of NSBPD. And uh, today I want to uh, share a testimony from my friend. I've been praying for my friend. Over recent, she had a problem. Her son got sick. The stomach was big. The stomach was big. It's no, it was not look like, looked like a, 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 a normal stomach. It was appeared very big. It was full. It was not normal. So she had to took her to took the boy to the hospital. The boy is four years. So when they they went for checkup, they do a CT scan. They told her that your your boy has a, an intestinal failure, intestinal failure. So some part of his intestinal, the nerves have died. So they cannot, the feces cannot come out normally. That's why the stomach was the stomach was look, looking big. The doctor told her the solution is to cut the, the intestine, the failure, the, 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 the intestine that has a problem. So they had to cut, and then they connect the intestine that is okay, with the, which there is no paralysis in, in the nerves. So it is a long procedure and it is risk and um, is that is the only way they could do so i told her you will not go for that well, because what god cannot do does not exist i'm an spbd member i'll lay your your matter into the prayer so i joined the prayer on friday 23rd and the man of god mentioned pastor jerry is mentioned 
uh, within 42 minutes. He said intestinal failure, intestinal failure. I don't know who you are. I hear intestinal failure, intestinal failure, intestinal failure. About the power that raised Jesus from the dead, I announce, let it be reversed. I said, this is Maxim, this is Maxim, Maxim, you are healed, you are healed, no more, no more intestinal failure in the name of Jesus, you nerves, you never awake, every nerves be alive, be alive, be alive, awake, no failure, no failure, no failure in the name of Jesus, and guess what, guess what Pastor Jerry is, guess what, guess what, yesterday on 27, they went for checkup, and the doctors, they called each other, they were wondering what is happening, this boy is fine, no more failure, no intestinal failure, his body is okay, everything is no more, everything is no more, everything is no more, no intestinal failure, no nerves failure, nothing is dead, nothing, they said the nerves are dead, but it's, it's not, it is okay, it is no more, it is no more, every time in a disease, it is terminated, God, God is great, God is is great what god cannot do does not exist oh what god cannot do does not exist god bless you pastor jerry as god bless you pastor any guru a guru and everyone god bless you mama and no jerry god bless you i love you i love you mwah, 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 mwah. god bless you what god cannot do does not exist i'll come for my testimony in jesus name amen i'm richard from august nigeria and the woman who the lord has shown mercy i bless the name of the lord for every good thing he has done for me. It happened in December 2022 when I had a serious cough. Anytime I cough, stain of blood will be on my saliva, in my saliva. So I went to the clinic. They were supposed to send me for test, TB test. Then the result came out, it came out negative. So the doctor asked me to go and do chest history, which I did. And the history was out. They told me that the result that, the result that, that was something in my chest. Came, then I took it to the lab. They tried, they check it. Then I said, it was cancerous. At the end of the day, the doctor said that it was cancer of the lung. I was afraid, but I believe that God will heal me. So I told my daughter that I will pray. My daughter being a medical doctor, mom told me that morning, we will pray and at the same time, we do medical treatment. I said, okay, no problem. That was how we started the treatment. The first chemo, I was asked to do two sessions. So I did, after the two sessions, I made up and then I was not going again. So later, my daughter now said, we should go and see the doctor again, because I was not feeling fine. So we went, I'm getting there. Because I did the chest history after the, the chemo. Since I, did, I don't know anything about medical. I snapped it, the results, sent it to my daughter. So my daughter saw it, my daughter called me and said, Mommy, this thing was still there. She sat with it and sent it back to me. And I said, okay, come watch me. I am not going for chemo any longer. That I believe God will heal me. She said, okay. So, a few days later, one of my friends, my mother in the Lord, called me and said that, come with my sister. There is a program I used to watch. And I said, I said, if I can join, I should believe that God will do it for me. I said, okay. I said, as long as it's prayer, I'm ready. I told her that I was ready to join. So anytime the program starts, she will send it to me. She said, you need this altar of fire. So, because I was new, then I used to, I will wait. When, after the book program, I will wait until after the testimony. I will watch the testimony, claim it. When others are sharing their own testimony, say, God, this is how I'm going to share my own testimony. On the 19th of June, this month, 2023, I was with my daughter. So there was, also as the administration was going, Pastor Jerry just said, I hear God reversing lung cancer. He repeated it, repeated it like two, three times. For the Lord said to me, I'm running away. I'll go to us. Every lung cancer. Every lung cancer. Every lung cancer. So say the Lord, by the time you get there, they will not see anything again. They will not see anything again. Immediately I heard that I was, I was very, very happy. And I claimed it. I said, that's what of knowledge or prophecy belongs to me. So I claimed it. So I made up my mind that I was going to do um, history 
on the following on the following Monday, which was 25th. So that was 25th, on my way, I was saying, what God cannot do does not exist. What uh, God cannot fix does not exist. What God cannot solve does not exist. So I was just saying it. When I got there, they called me. I was able to do the the history. They did this for me. Papa, I left. So after doing it, I was still confessing, making my confession that what God cannot do does not exist. So as I was going, as we, so the following day, I went for the test. When I got there, I collected the test. I collected the results. People were many food that place. So I couldn't open it. My result, I couldn't check it there. So I held it. I went my way out and I opened it. And I said, ah. I said, thank God. Though. It's like, this thing is no longer there. What my daughter said, she was circled the other time. The, the, the name, the time is not here. So I decided to, I was just, I don't know, because they wrote something else, something on it again, which I don't understand. So I said, anyway, when I get to put the story short, I, I, I got to, I snapped it. I sent it to my daughter. I was expecting. She didn't call me. I said, ah, maybe she has found something. I said, it. So that is why she didn't call me. At the end of the day, she called me. I said, mommy, ah, where did you do this thing? And I said, ah, what is it? Say, that thing is no longer there. And I said, yes, now, nah, it's no longer there. He said, where is it? And I said, you are the one, she was the one that took me to the place to do the, that is why I normally do it. So she now said, ah, she was happy. So that is what God has done for me. I really bless the name of the Lord because of this healing. Because I was seriously afraid. Despite the fact that I trusted in the Lord, but I was still afraid. But I give God all the glory that at the end of everything, God took, took that control and healed me perfectly. Pastor Jerry, I really bless the name of the Lord for you because God is using you to do wonders in the life of people. A lot of people have been delivered through this water of fire. And it is you God has been using for these miracles. I pray that the anointing on your head will not run dry. And I pray that the devil will not write the last chapter of your life in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for all the pastors that are working with you. I appreciate God on your behalf. And I pray that God will bless you all in Jesus' name. And that the, that crown of glory that God has promised is since when we get to heaven. None of you shall miss it in Jesus' name. Indeed, what our God cannot do does not exist. So, bless the name of the Lord for everything. Cannot do does not exist. What God cannot do does not exist. Proceed 22. I at the early part of 2022, around January or February, so I'm not really sure because I just told you that I had download what you want God to do for you, the pictures you want, anything you want downloaded. So there was no thing that I picked up my other phone because I noticed I was meant to showing the prayer point to start and meant to show the pictures of what I was doing. So I used my other phone and I downloaded I want tweets, I wanted a boy and a girl. I downloaded it and I started praying. The next thing I will see, I keep going on and on. You see people saying, oh, but I will say, God, when are you going to do my own oh, but good testimony? I want to share testimony shouting, oh, but God. And I have been believing God for the past 11 years in the foot of the IVF has been done, filled, all manner of fertility, um, drugs has been taken at the point that they had it with. It looks like nothing was happening. I've heard stories, in laws have mocked me. Sometimes they will see me and they say, Ah, have you not stopped this your family planning? And in my head, I will be like, How can somebody that is looking for the fruit of the be in family planning? They will be discussing and they will be saying, Oh, and thank God, we give him back to three. We give him back to two. No, no, no. And, and when I remember all those things, I was start crying. I say, God of Pastor Jerry, that's what you're doing for people. Is it that you're selecting people in your business places? I thought I got tired. Then one day I stumbled on my friend, daughter, giving testimony. I said, Oh, finally, I've seen someone that I know that God has done it for you. So my own God. So I held on to that all by those testimony. It was so important to me. Every morning I would say, Oh, all bagu, when they would have, as if they were just arranging those people, they were coming to share all bagu, all bagu. I say, hey, this is all bagu, whatever it means. I know it means something has entered. My own will enter, my own will enter. Just in March, I started feeling so I was not sure. April, it was my friend, I swear. When I went to see the students, when they told me to I started describing just the picture I downloaded with the children where I said I want this one fair and want all that. And we're praying to it. As we were praying, God came through. At the end of the day, 11 years buried me to be. But it's twins. Look at my 
Jesus TV. Thank God for me and I will be putting on the platform that it looks like it was a joke. It never came true. Thank God for me. It was actually a one that people were coming to check to be sure. Are you sure? I didn't know when she was pregnant. I said, how did you know the God of us had to do it well? To his own glory, you will not share the truth. This is my first thing. Just the way I downloaded the baby girl. You were even describing that she has to be fair. The baby boy. I just want to share with Pastor Jerry. God will bless you. Every morning you wake up. You wake up every morning for our sake. God will bless you. Oh, and God bless you. Pastor Jerry, God bless you. I hope Pastor Jerry is The skin cancer was spreading. It was spreading on my nose, my face, everywhere, and um, I kept connecting on the auto fire. One morning, Pastor Jerry mentioned my case. The message of God is stretching out to every skin cancer, to every skin cancer, to every skin cancer. Let it be reversed right now. Let it be reversed right now. Good morning. My name is Nelly Kilembe. I'm recording from Malawi. I am the one the Lord has shown mercy. It all started last year. I got sick in July and I was hospitalized. I couldn't breathe. I was put on oxygen for 18 days and the word of knowledge came for me one of the days when I was connected on the altar of fire. Pastor Jerry said, I don't know who you are, but every time they give you oxygen, the more your saturation keeps getting lower and lower. I don't know who you are. They said oxygen is very low. Oxygen is very low. I even see them give you oxygen. But the more they give, the more the saturation is even lower. If you are the one, put it on the live stream. I command, let it be reversed by fire. And I claimed it for myself. I said, Amen. But I couldn't believe because my faith was shaken then and I couldn't believe that Pastor Jerry was speaking to me. So I said, Lord, I'll connect again tomorrow on the altar of fire. And if this word is for me, please let Pastor Jerry speak to me again. And I connected again the next day. And Pastor Jerry said, I don't know who you are. It looks like your breath will cease after some minutes. It will cease and get relieved again. After some minutes, your breath will cease. I don't know what is wrong. Whatsoever is responsible, I command, let it be reversed, my friend. And I claimed it for myself. I knew it was for me. And I said, Amen. It did not take a day or two. I was released from the hospital. I was off oxygen and I started walking by myself, but I still had to make the visits back to the hospital because they wanted to find out why I was not able to breathe. That is when they found me with skin cancer. The skin cancer was spreading. It was spreading on my nose, my face, everywhere. And um, I kept connecting on the auto fire. I believed what God started he was surely going to finish it. Although my faith was shaken, I was angry in spirit. Why were other people testifying? And I was not testifying. Yet I was connecting on the altar every day. One morning, Pastor Jerry mentioned my case. The message of God is stretching out to every skin cancer. To every skin cancer. To every skin cancer. Let it be reversed right now. My friend Lloyd from Streams of Joy Abuja was on the altar that day. And she wrote my name and claimed it for me and she came and told me about it and i went back i rewatched the video and claimed it for myself i said skin cancer be reversed by fire and from there on i started feeling good about myself everything started changing when i went for my routine checkup that is when they told me i do not need chemotherapy anymore that i'm healed and i'm free from cancer I'm i do not know how to thank this god but there is god on this altar i do not know how to glorify him i do not know how to scream they said how will you shout i do not even know how to shout i also want to give thanks to pastor jerry pastor eno pastor eguru pastor ok for all the sacrifices that you have made for us here on the altar, may the oil on your head never run dry. What God cannot do does not exist. I am the one the Lord has shown mercy. Thank you. And as we begin, celebrate the Lord. Celebrate the Lord. If you can heal skin cancer, don't say anything. Celebrate the Lord. 
Celebrate the Lord. Celebrate the Lord. What God cannot do. What our God cannot turn around. What God cannot do. And as we be as Jesus day here. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, people of God. I could not even stand up before and after. I mean, look at what the devil tried to do. People of God, skin cancer that had already started spreading. People of God, remember it had already started affecting her respiratory system. And just for them to find out and they said that that was it. Look at what Jesus, just look at now. Look at, the devil is such a, eh, so I have never seen a bad person. I don't even know how to, like you look at that beautiful young woman and you wanted to wreck her life that. Way, what I our God cannot do. Look at what Jesus you, did. Jesus. Look, just check Jesus. out what Jesus did. People of God, while you're still trying to wrap your head around that, look at the twins. Yes, look at the twins. <laughs> look at the twins, people of God. Somebody under the sound of my heart. <laughs> hear me as I hear the Lord. You see, hey. your two hands. Hey. You will not need one. You will not need one. The kind of miracle God is about to bring your way. As your amen will thunder, you will need two hands to carry them. And people of God, while you're still recovering from that, people of God, look at that lung cancer. Look at that lung cancer. I'm happy. I'm blessed at these NSPPDs that go out of their way to just say, you know, you need to be here. You need to be on this altar. You need to be on this altar. Look at what God is doing. People of God, while you're still trying to recover from that particular testimony, look at this other one about the retina detachment and the woman that was in coma. And people of God, this is that. Look, you know, we say these things and they sound like, you sure? They, yes, sound, they yes, sound like people of God. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I can say is that what God cannot do does please. not exist. And people of God, it's amazing to see that instant miracle of that it's baby boy that started walking. Woo! People of God, after four months, I'm after tired, four bro. months, after four months of being, two months of being in the ICU yes. and a total of four months of being in the hospital, what our God cannot do does not, not You see, one thing that touched me about that testimony was when the mother said, you know, the boy had a cardiac arrest. Yes. This yes. boy that had a cardiac arrest. I see how old is this boy you see how the devil is just he's just causing problem he's just i hate the devil i hate i oh my goodness I, I, any any area of your life where the enemy is beginning to tamper as your amen will turn the left fire answer amen and people of God, look at how the Lord reversed intestinal failure. And look at, you see, what stuns me is how people pray and say, Father, please let pastors yes, speak about yes, yes, And the connection in the spirit yes, immediately yes, and how the yes, Lord reaches yes, out. Yes. And two persons actually said today, at yes. some point they felt like, God, were you being selected? Yeah. And all of, but they didn't know that God had a plan God. for them. Stay on the altar. Yes, and if you have your communion, we are ready right now.